Hi, I'm Tyler with Make. We live in amazing technological times, but none of it really looks like anybody's vision of the future. This week's project, the L-Cycle, adds that retro future flair to your favorite ride. What's best, you'll be generating all the electricity you need as you pedal, so you'll never run out of batteries. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. To get started with this project, gather up the parts by either purchasing them online or simply head on over to your local Radio Shack where you can pick up most of the electronic components needed for the build. You'll also need these basic tools. First, let's talk about stepper motors and how they work. They typically come with four, five, six, or even eight wires. For this project, we'll be using a four-wire motor, but any of the other varieties can be made to work. To make sure you have the correct kind of stepper motor, spin the motor shaft in your fingers. If there is no resistance and the motor turns freely, then you probably have a reluctant stepper, which has an iron core so it won't work as a generator. Head on over to the project page for tips on how to correctly identify a suitable stepper motor for this build. Once you've verified that you have the correct motor, you'll need to determine which wires are the coil ends. With a multimeter, check the resistance of the wires until you find the two pairs that have the highest resistance between them. These are the coil ends and will give us the most power output. Once you've identified these two pairs, switch the multimeter to AC voltage and spin the motor again. A really good way to do this is to connect the spindle to a drill and fire it up. You're looking for a motor that can output in the range of 10 to 20 volts when spun quickly. Once you've found a suitable motor, the next step is to find a wheel to attach to it. Inline skate wheels are perfect for this job. Remove the bearings from the wheel and attach it to the shaft of the motor. There are a number of ways you can do this. Here we're using U-Mold, a moldable, sculptable plastic available at Radio Shack. Check out the project page for other ways to mount the wheel. Now is also a great time to think about how you'll be mounting the motor to the bicycle frame so that the rear wheel can drive the motor. If the skate wheel attachment to your motor is permanent, you'll likely need to attach any mounting hardware to the motor first. Having hooked up your generator wheel, now you need to prepare the transformers. You're going to use two transformers, one for each L-wire and each phase of the stepper motor's output. A good source for transformers are the AC power adapters from Radio Shack. You can buy a suitable value unit and extract the transformer. Make sure you get an AC adapter, as DC versions use switching technology and have no useful transformer inside. Since L-Wire requires over 100 volts to drive it, you're going to wire up the transformers in reverse. That is, you'll connect the output of our stepper motor to the low voltage side and the L-Wire to the high voltage side. This will allow the transformer to step the voltage to over 100 volts as needed to drive the L-Wire. Next, solder and heat shrink the Zener diodes together. This will limit the AC waveform at the top and bottom of the cycle. Attach them to the transformer as described on the project page. The last step in building the circuit is to clip the leads from the two power inverters and connect them to the high voltage side of the terminal blocks. This makes it really easy to connect the L-wire after mounting the box to your bike. Mount the transformers so they fit inside the lid of the enclosure and attach the wire connectors to the stepper motor. Also, add a couple of insulated electrical conduit mounting clips to the enclosure. These will be used to attach it to the bicycle frame. Now you can mount the enclosure to the bike frame and then mount the stepper motor so that its wheel is resting against the rear rim of the bicycle. It's time to wrap your bike with some L-wire. When you add the wire, make sure you keep it clear of any moving parts, especially the handlebars and brakes. Once it's all wired up, simply plug in the ends to the connectors on the electronic enclosure. Now it's time to get on and ride. Be sure to head on over to the project page for more information about the L-cycle. It's also a great place to talk about the build and share your own tricked out L-cycle.